Hey everyone, me Kevin here, and in this video we are going to stalk Ehor. Do Zanisqui! Something of that effect. He works at S3 Partners, he, uh, he has access to the Black App, because, well, he works at that company. I have access to the Black App as well, because I pay for it. He knows how to use it very, very well, and so I'm just gonna stalk his Twitter. And let's go through and add some commentary on it. So, here's Ehor, look! Oh wait, I can't zoom in anymore. Wait, it was supposed to be dramatic. It was supposed to be like this. Look, it's Ehor. All right, we got it. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Uh, FRX. So FRX, folks. FRX is has been sitting at like ten dollars. It's a spac. It's it's been sitting at ten dollars for a while. You've got a former Disney executive there. I have an interview with this company on my channel. If you go to uh, YouTube, type in Meet Kevin FRX, you should find it. Forest Road Acquisition Company. Anyway, they're uh, about 19.23% short. I think, personally, I think they were heavily shorted as uh, a, a sort of uh, SPAC attack. A lot of SPACs got destroyed and heavily shorted. I uh, haven't seen a lot of momentum push towards FRX, so I briefly held some position in it. I took, a, uh, I took about $1,000 of profit on it, and I left. I just didn't see any kind of... Uh, real activity in, in momentum coming. I do think, though, it's just a matter of time before we see momentum on FRX. Just so you, so you can see the ticker here, uh, as well as another one that's moving right now. I, I want to show you Canoe in just a moment. But we've got FRX right now. Uh, it's uh, it, it's yeah, it's sitting at about $10.09. Sometimes you can honestly trade this one where you buy it close to 10 and then when it hits 11 you just go ring the bell and get out. That's a common strategy with FRX. Uh, long run, obviously, it's it's seen as an affordable alternative to Peloton. Go EV is something that was pumping today. It, it is about 30% short. Actually, let me tell you exactly what it's short. Here it is. Go EV is sitting at 30.67% short. We have shares outstanding that are short of 30.62 million. Just so you can see the chart here of short interest, it has briefly uh, inflected down slightly, but uh, GoEV did get a little bit of a soft pump on Wall Street bets. I think it could have gotten a larger pump. It didn't get as much traction, really, because there's really, really no catalyst. It's possible you have a little bit of buy the rumor, sell the news happening with Canoe, because you do have a press release coming up, uh, or or uh, some kind of investor presentation coming up. I think it's in two days. I believe it's the 17th, but anyway, you could just Google that and you'll figure it out. It's possibly why you might see a little bit of a pump beforehand. I personally don't hold my breath on investor presentations, so. All right, let's go back to Ehor. Uh, all right, here we go. So, uh, Arkimoto, he reports, has a 100 out of 100 short squeeze risk score. Uh, is uh, is is uh, S3 Partners' opinion on... <laughs> Oh, jeez, on Arkimoto right now. Then you've got Sundial sitting at 14.13% short. Uh, shares shorted are down 8.88 million. <laughs> Just say that multiple times fast. Uh, then you've got uh, Torchlight, which is 12.38% short. This one's not really moving on the basis of a short squeeze, in my opinion. This is moving because of a special dividend that gives you access to Torchlight shares that are uh, special preferred shares that will give you ownership in some of the liquidated assets that Torchlight is, is getting rid of. Uh, and those are, some folks are estimating those to be worth about $5. I personally am concerned about that, that if that land appraisal is high, those shares could end up being worth a whole lot less. So I'm not so tempted to pay, although you get and receive the dividend. If you hold the shares, I believe it's on June 24th. Verify that before you do anything. Pretty sure it's June 24th. So you're gonna, I think you are gonna get people trying to buy it and then dumping it. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's a little bit of a fire sale after uh, that, that preferred dividend is handed out because people aren't gonna want the leftover torchlight, potentially, uh, depending on how, how much of it converts over to meta and, and, and how it converts over, so we'll see. Uh, looking at short interest here, yeah, these it looks like here, just millions of shares short. And it's no surprise that Tesla has the most millions of shares short relative to Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, and Facebook. Uh, more than double what Facebook is short. Percentage-wise, though, kind of low. I mean, Tesla's like 5% short, so it's, it's pretty low. Looking at uh, short as a percentage, you've got PubM is still sitting at 53%. The problem with PubM is you don't have options, so you eliminate that opportunity for a potential gamma squeeze. Remember that a gamma squeeze 
uh, is, is really when you start getting this thing known as delta hedging. So in, in other words, as more and more people buy call options, especially as they're out of the money, and then those start coming in the money, uh, the, the other side of the transaction, the market makers, tend to delta hedge, so they're not taking on too much risk by having this potential infinite loss call that they have to provide you with unless they cover and, and they have shares by hedging. Uh, and so in other words, with options, oftentimes you can you could see a short squeeze a lot faster because of that delta hedging, which adds buying pressure to the stock. That is not something that you would have with something that doesn't have options. Now, that doesn't mean you can't have a short squeeze at PubM. You could definitely still have a strong short squeeze at PubM. It just, in my opinion, makes it a little less likely, a little harder to pull off. Clove still at 45.92%. Personally, uh, Workhorse was down a good chunk today. It was down about 6%. I don't have any shares in Workhorse or options right now. I'm waiting for another dip opportunity. It, Workhorse is really sitting, I want to say last time I checked, it was sitting right around our 14 support level. Yeah, look at that, 1418 right now. And we've got our support level drawn here at about 1403. If I get a break under uh, 14... 03 on workhorse I go back into like the 13 or oh my gosh if I go into like the ten dollars again whoo that's gonna really set me up in my opinion for for a short squeeze potential here uh, it's something that I would be keeping an eye on uh, FUV is Arkimoto uh, that's actually incredible that it broke to 40.2 percent short I'm actually having a hard time leaving that hold on I want to see that with my own eyes because I at least I believe this was way lower yeah, so let's let this load Oh, wow. Wow, you are really short. Look at that. Uh, so this literally, Arkimoto, has gone from 33% short to 40% short in the last month. So this is really getting short attacked here. Uh, this this is an interesting target in my opinion. I don't have any options right now. I do have shares in Arkimoto, but uh, I do not have any options right now. I am looking for opportunities to, to buy the dip on some of these. I don't know that 1276 is that dip, but I, let's see here. Let's go to the, mm, okay, we'll go to the hour chart. Yeah, so Arkimoto for me as a short squeeze potential, golly, if I could pick them up over at this level again, like the 1120, I'm gonna draw a line here. If I could pick them up at about 1120, ooh, that'd, that'd be pretty nice. Or even better is, yeah, that's almost a triple touch right there at 942. I don't know that we're gonna get this kind of oversell again, especially since we never really had a consistent bottom here. We have this ascending pattern. So I probably would be tempted here to pick this one up. I mean, look at these touches. Touch, touch, many touches over here. If I could get Workhorse at 942, I'd probably get some longer options and hold that thing into a squeeze. That's probably what I'd be looking for, something around this aspect. So, uh, okay, let's go back here to Ehor. All right, let's go back. We've got uh, Fisker sitting at 28.09% uh, short. Not a surprise, a little bit of a surprise that Arkimoto has gone up uh, as much. Uh, Palantir is barely short. Wish, yeah, see, Wish is barely short as well. Somebody posted this like fake article. Oh, what did I say? Somebody says, you mean FUV. If I accidentally said the wrong thing, I'm sorry. But anyway, I think you know. Uh, oh, yeah, I, I don't know. Anyway, if I said the wrong thing, I'm sorry. I'm going to keep going now. So Wish. Uh, Wish is one that really bothered me because somebody posted a picture from the Bloomberg terminal that it was 50% short. And I remember saying I thought that was completely wrong and complete bogus because none of the short interest data was reflecting that. It only said it was 50% short from like three weeks ago or some like really old stat. Uh, and that was while this run was happening and I just thought it was ludicrous. But I have to give it to him. You know, the thing's still up. It's consolidated a little bit, but it's at 11.38 right now. It's up from that $10 where it was. And it's certainly up from that 7.66 where it was over here when it had run. But I, I wouldn't be shocked to see this potentially rotate down if people were getting in it because they thought it had a high short interest, and now it doesn't. That's just an individual thought that I have there. Uh, let's see if Ehor, anything else for us? 
United Wholesale Mortgage, 15% short, probably too little to really squeeze. Same thing with BB here at 18.15. United Wholesale, I think, is still going to have a rough time. Yes, on Workhorse. Still think is going to have a hard time, though, because you are really up against, uh, what's it called, um, mortgage rates. As people, if people think mortgage rates are going to go up, it's going to be a little rougher. We do have, uh, actually, I don't even know what this particular stock is here. 14.9% short. Uh, we've got FSR here at 21.93%, uh, but we've already talked about Fisker and my thoughts on Fisker. What we could do is we could do a quick little screener here as well. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go ahead and hop in here, do a little refresh. Uh, remember, you can always get any of my buy-sell alerts, certainly not guaranteed to make you money, uh, but I, you'll at least get my alerts in terms of what I'm looking at, what I'm doing, what my strategy is, with what I'm buying, how much I'm buying, why I'm buying it. Uh, you'll always get those if you're in the Stocks and Psychology and Money Group, which you are, of course, invited to. Use that 40% off coupon code in the link down below to join. Okay, so taking a peek at uh, short interest here, uh, we have a 43% on workhorse. The Geo is still high at 39%. Fulgent Genetics and Asperion also pretty high here. And so is Go Go on Track and PetMed. These are these are some of your bigger ones. Lemonade's pretty big too, though. I'm kind of shocked. 28% short. Ooh, it's so juicy. Uh, lo like no pun intended with the fact that it is lemonade, but. Uh, yeah, Lemonade, I have to wait for a lower number here. I've got some good exposure to Lemonade. Okay. Mm yeah. Okay, let's see here. Look, I made money on Workhorse. Uh, somebody here is saying I'm going to make a mistake on Workhorse. I made like over $30,000 in like three days on Workhorse. I was very happy with that. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to play the greed game if I'm going to do short-term trading, which I do. And when I do short-term trading, I I will always take a profit. There is no there is no hodling short-term. Okay, so uh, I this is lemonade here. Uh, yeah, I, I, we did. This is where we tracked that triple bounce on uh, the 79 level. Not sure we're going to revisit that anytime soon. We'll see. Could we easily break through uh, something like a 96 and a 91, maybe fall to like 80s again? Yeah, it depends. It depends how long momentum and, and potential shorts, you know, take a break. Short squeezers take a break. So, all right. But a lemonade would be a potential other target. All right, so thanks for watching this portion here on short interest. Quick note uh, for those of you asking, skills is 28.89% short. So those are some of my thoughts on short interest, some companies to be watching in terms of short interest. I've also got a note here that somebody's asking for short interest on COIN and DraftKings. DraftKings, COIN, not too, uh, I mean, uh, COIN at least, it's too early to see a lot of shorting on coin. And since it's already sold off so much, I think you're just really not seeing much here. So it's at 2.18%. But if I go to DKNG, if we can ever get the darn thing to load here, DKNG. Oh, that's, that's, I typed it wrong. Oh no, DKNG. Pretty sure I hit the K and it just didn't register it. We'll go with that. We'll blame the computer, not me. 10.72% short. So you're not really looking at short plays here on DraftKings and coins. Uh, or a coin. We can though look at DraftKings briefly as, yeah, no, it's it's still, it's down 4% on the day, down about 0.4 in the afters here. So we're really waiting for some more clarity on something like DraftKings, but DraftKings not really a short play here. So things to know. All right, so those are my thoughts on the particular short squeeze movers or potential short squeeze movers. And those are ones to pay attention to. As always, check out the link down below for my amazing programs. They get 40% off and join me for lifetime access to all the content in them.